Brian Radnich. Hi, Brian, Brian Wilson, long time no see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely, 100 years or so, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a long time. A long time. So how are you these days? Oh, not bad. I've got a small ailment, as you know. Yes. Um, that I'm battling at the moment, but um, apart from that, I'm okay. You know, we, we you know, I, I did the, want to do these interviews to go back in time to, to um, for you to remember what it was, what it was like back then, as opposed to now. You know, with all this virtual reality, COVID, and everything like that. So, just give me a, a brief profile. When when did you uh, when did you start karate and where? Okay, I started karate in Auckland, New Zealand, uh, when I was about eighteen, I think it was. Um, in those days in in, um, in New Zealand, there was virtually nil. Um, the club that I, I joined did judo and karate, and I was interested in the karate. Um, so I did that for a while, and I think I got to Greenbelt in that, before I came over to... Um, Do you happen to remember Sydney. the name of the instructor at the no, time? No, I, I can't Because I mean, I, I sometimes don't remember who we trained. No, so I, it's I can't remember. Um, but they did give me the address of... Um, a dojo in Sydney that I, I I went, so I chased that up when I came over, and I was about twenty then, and uh, I, I stayed in that club for quite some time under um, various um, uh, sensei, but um, including John Taylor. But before John, um, when I first went there, um, there was another black belt there, um, and I also trained with um, John. Um, John, John, John. Oh, I've forgotten his name. Now. That's all right. It's easy to forget. Uh, he was a Kiwi too. Uh, oh, you mentioned his name the other day, actually. Is it, is it John Williams? No, 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 no. no There's lots that. of there is lots of Johns. Oh, yeah. that's, that's the, that's oh, I forget. Word. I forget. <laughs> they might come to me. Yeah, yeah it might come to you. They were hard days, hard training in those days too. In comparison, from what you see now. With the younger ones and uh, the up, up and comings and things like that, do you think it's on the same par? Or? I, th I think it is, but um, in Kokushin, I think it is. Um, I don't think in overall karate it in is. In other styles, in you other mean. styles. Yes. Um, Kokushin has always been strong, and luckily, um, a lot of the black belts that are still training now, which are you know fourth and fifth, sixth dance, uh, have kept that toughness and tradition yes. there. Yes. So that's passed on. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen when they when they pass on? Well, that's so a good question, but um, I've seen some of the um, uh, black belts underneath them, and they are very strong too. Very so strong I, I think it will keep on going. Yeah. Well, you see, exponentially it's grown, like I was saying, uh, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, when I first started, there was about I suppose in Australia there would have been maybe under a thousand people actually training in Kyogoshin because it, was, it you know, I only came here in 1964 anyway, and I was 14. Yeah. And everybody chance until I was 16, but you know, it, it's still to me it's still as strong, like in its in its spirit, as it was, you know. Mm. But you. you I'll go to go to the world championships. When you when you went to those, you went to the very first world championships. You were Correct. our representative from Australia, the whole of Australia, I believe. <laughs> you were the only one, weren't you? No, no, no. There was there four. Was, there was four, there was four of you. Yes. Were they all for the, from the same club that went, went no, over there? No. They were all from they different. All, all from different and clubs. And who picked those guys to go? John Taylor. John Taylor. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was the main man. He's the main man there now. Um. So. When you're at these championships, how did you feel? Did you feel like a... Well, look, um, I was um, a substitute to go to those titles because um, Nick, um, Nick Kujic, Kujic uh, hurt himself and couldn't attend. So I get a phone call. I'm, I was living up here at the mo at That's that time, time. Uh, running a Mwilumbar uh, karate club. And John said, look, um, Nick's pulled out, would you like to fill his shoes? And I said, yeah, right, no worries. Okay. But I, I was really thrown into the deep end because I had no idea and I, I did no training towards it. So when I got over there, um, I, I was astounded at the um, techniques and, uh, mm -hmm. how, and how tough it was. And how strong they were yeah, as well. And yeah, and how strong, and it was, 
stronger than the Japanese. So how many competitors days. were there at that time? It was quite a few. Oh, there was a lot of competitors. Over a hundred, over. Oh yeah, 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 yeah over a hundred. Yeah. And I won a few fights. You so fared pretty well, I. Yeah, you? I did. I got into those finals um, on the second day of the tournament. Um, that that worked out quite well, but I learnt a lot. The big thing that struck me in those days was to work out how tough it was, but also the techniques that were used. Mm. Um, Have you seen them? They, before? they, well, we practice them, but not strengthen them so That's much. So uh, the low kicks were the biggest things I noticed mm. with Mawashi Gary and things like that. We were doing that anyway here. But low kicks um, were the big thing. It was a low blow back then, wasn't it? It was. Because they hurt, didn't they? They, they really hurt. Yeah. Um, I avoided those, luckily. <laughs> so you fought, um, give, give us the names of a few people that you fought. Well, look, one, I, I can't remember the names, but uh, one, one was from Israel and another one was from um, uh, England, I think, and then I come across the Japs then. And which the was, Japanese, sorry. Then you then you sort of started to see things in a different light when the Japs come on the scene. Or? Oh yeah, I learned a lot from that. Mm. Um, uh, took a lot of punishment. Um, however, I fared okay until the last bloody second. Uh, <laughs> I had actually the, the Japanese that I fought uh, on that day. Um, I'd knocked him out of the ring and even. Right. Um, however, he caught me with a Moshigiri. Yeah. Um, he is one of the best. Japanese uh, exponents of Moishi Giri. Yes, exactly. Was it Oishi? Yes. Because Oishi, I, I remember you know sparring with Oishi. Oishi is just such a talented man and uh, and a very very strong fighter too. Oh, he, was, he wasn't so strong. big. No, but, but his techniques fast were very strong and quick. as well. Yeah. yeah. So I just missed one high high kick and bang. That's what that happened. That was it. At <laughs> the end of the tournament. So where would, that, where would that have put you in the ratings then? Would that have put you in, uh, in the final sixteen? In the final sixteen, was, that's yeah. what I thought. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty. That's pretty amazing. So I, I did it's fairly first, well under the circumstances. Under the circumstances, they did very, very well. Yeah. Of course, we brought all that knowledge back. So the next tournament um, that was held in Australia, they learnt all of this, mm. and. Um, so things changed in Australia then and, and everyone knew just what exactly. what to expect, let's say. I mean, we used to train on the beach and at the weekends and uh, there'd only be a few people there, but everybody put in a lot of effort on those on those beach training. Oh yeah, days. yes. It was yeah. strong in those days. You things. always came there, you always, you know, never backed away from the training. No, yes, you know, I, so. I, I, I did it. Yeah. No, they were, they were good days. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, um, my life changed a little bit and I moved overseas. Where did uh, you go? Just for war, work. Oh, I've, I've, I'm, I've been a project manager for 20 years and oh, okay. uh, building um, hotels and resorts around Southeast oh, wow. Asia. Wow, okay. Um, I, I've been to Indonesia, Thailand, um, Singapore, um, where else? Oh, that's about it. Been around a little bit. Yeah. So, so this, this job took you to all those places, like building, building. Yeah, and India was one of the big India places as well. I went. Yeah, I spent wow. uh, seven years in India. Wow. But I never, wherever I was working, I didn't come across uh, Kokushin, which is a bit unfortunate. So I missed a lot of, uh, a lot of the training. But I, I kept in contact with everyone mm. along the way. Yeah. So since then, like, uh, how do you? I mean, what's your philosophy on, on like, and what you've done, you know, in in uh, in, in this field in Kyokushin? And what's your philosophy on Kyokushin? Is it, you know, is it? Uh, and did you find it easy to do? Did you find it, uh, or did you? Find well, it's it a good question. Um, I was born with a little bit of deficiency in my hips, right? Uh, that no one really knew about. So I can't do a proper lotus sitting. Um, I can't, my, my hips don't go out flat. Oh, I see. So that um, interfered a little bit with my Mawashi Garys. I had to sort of adapt to my Mawashi Gary mm. and sidekicks. Um, yeah. So I, I, I had to change it a little bit to suit, suit my body. Suit your body, body yeah. function, how this won't work. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> 
But I got the other one to work very well. <laughs> I asked you before, in New Zealand was it? No, that was in Sydney when in I Sydney. first went over, John Jarvis. John Jarvis, oh, yeah, I remember that name. Um, he was a pretty big guy. Um, I went When I first went to Sydney, um, the sensei there was John Jarvis and uh, uh, John Taylor was, I think, a brown belt at this stage. Really? Yeah. So was that, was that in the YMCA days? Yeah, I think it was YMCA, yeah. I can to think of it. So John was, uh, there was somebody else that was in his But there was somebody else and I can't remember his name. I think, I think, uh, I think we talked about this yesterday and I think it was Bob Bolton. Well, I, I know I, he was another, he was an instructor there. Yeah, no, I trained with Bob too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I thought there was a third person. There might be a third person, but I, I, I can't remember him. No. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a, while, a while ago now for us. But John so. was there and they were very tough, those guys. And um, John went obviously to Japan. Yes. And come back very tough. Yes, well actually. <laughs> Still is well, a he came, with, he came back with his tail between his legs in a way because uh, because he told me, he said he could hardly walk down the stairs and he certainly couldn't, couldn't walk up them, he had to crawl up them, yeah. you know, so, you know, well, one of, the leg kicks. Yeah, uh, one of my students had the same story, you know, Jeff Everingham. Yeah. He, he had the same story, he came back with a busted knee. Yeah, because they, they'd work it to... Uh, oh, they were being, just uh, using them as targets, basically, <laughs> in those days. Yeah. They were exactly. But it toughened them up. Well, there was a thing that where the, it was like a foreign, you know, get the foreigners, and uh, if you do get the opportunity, kick them in the mouth, knock their teeth out, you know, or break their nose, uh, but uh, definitely, definitely do something with the legs. Yeah. And they were, you know, because they realised, I think, at the time that uh, the rest of the world hadn't come up to speed with the leg kicks yet. No, really, no, they no so they didn't do exactly. as, as much brutality as the Japanese did. Yeah, you know, exactly. So, yeah. Well. We talked about a few points. I can't think of anything else to ask you because I'm getting too old to sort of remember these things, but uh, <laughs> it's been a pleasure talking to you. No right? worries. It's been a pleasure you myself. Know, one of the old legends of Kyokushin. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. <All right. laughs>